The final verdict would come down with the judge's hammer. Then she could do nothing but watch her victory slip between her fingers. She and her coach were in disbelief. She had trained so hard and now it was for nothing. She couldn't help what happened yet she was disqualified all the same. Her suit looks like everyone else's. Born to swim. Before we begin, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. No one loved the water more than Breck and Willis. She couldn't go a day without taking a plunge into the pool and training. Even at the young age of 17, Willis already had big dreams of getting a scholarship and eventually a shot at the Olympics. So she competed in any competitions she could, but she had no idea that it would eventually end in disaster. Brecken was one of the best swimmers on her team at the Diamond High School in Anchorage, Alaska. She worked hard and had a natural talent that one could only envy. She was a popular student who had a lot of friends and got on well with most of the teachers at school. Everyone loved her, but often when there was a lot of admiration, jealousy feasters. The stands by the pool were packed full of guests and staff excited to see the competition in the indoor room. That smelled of chlorine. She loved the exhilaration that came when her name was called out to do what she did best, the 100-meter freestyle, but one judge was looking at her a little too closely. As she heard the whistle, she knew it was her time. Every part of her body was ready for what came next. It was a natural reflex for her. She did it perfectly, or so she thought. She resurfaced at the end of the pool and pulled herself out and dried herself off with a towel. Brecken Willis of Diamond High School is disqualified. She couldn't believe what she had just heard. The words rang out in her mind. Was this really happening? She looked at her coach for answers, but he seemed to be dumbfounded as her. Lauren Langley, her coach, marched up to the referee with the fire in her eyes. She looked over at Brecken. After the referee pointed at her, she had to take a step back. What had been said to her? It was almost as if she had been slapped. Brecken then overheard, you can't be serious. She knew what she had to do. She couldn't just stand there and take it. Something must have been wrong for her to be disqualified. But what was it? She wanted to hear the excuse they came up with. The real reason would leave her furious. The referee had words for her coach and she caught a lot of what they were saying. She couldn't believe what she was hearing. She felt her face flush. What made Brecklin's face turn scarlet was overhearing. That girl's swimsuit was far up and I could see butt cheek touching butt cheek. Her coach scowled at the judge. Then they noticed her walking over. Lauren told Brecklin that they were leaving, but things would take an even stranger turn before the end of the day. Apparently, the referee had decided to eliminate the student from the competition because she was showing too much skin and decided she had intentionally hiked up her suit to be more revealing. But later, other reasons would emerge. Everyone else, including Brecklin, pointed out that every single girl wore the same exact suit. There was also a reason for the skin. It's called swimmer's wedgie, and everyone gets them, even regular swimmers who know the feeling and know how they are not comfortable. No one would do this intentionally. However, the real reason would soon come out. After the ruling, Coach Lorraine Langford went to social media and lodged a formal complaint with the Alaska School Activities Association too. The answer, however, was just as bad as the original complaint. Brecken, it turns out, was being specially targeted by the referee for a rather disgusting reason. Not only was the girl curvier than the other teammates, but she was also a mixed-race heritage. It might seem like something impossible to spot for most people, but when the details came to light, it was sadly believable. The facts ended up undisputable and caused a huge blast of outrage. Why? Everyone was wearing standard uniform suits. Two other girls looked very similar to her and her 100-meter freestyle execution was excellent. Her sister and fellow swimmer ended up the key to the situation. No other member of any team had been kicked out for appearance reasons, but she and her sister had, when they understood why everyone involved was furious. Coach Lauren Langford was seething when she spoke to KTUU. The rest of her team was wearing the same uniform and she was the only one disqualified. In my opinion that she has been targeted and singled out over the course of the last year. This disqualification, according to referee Jill Blackstone, was due to a new modesty rule. But the truth was becoming clearer and clearer. 
The new modesty rule had come with new standard issue swimsuits for every girl, but Reckon had been singled out because Jill Blackstone, the referee, just hadn't liked the way it looked on the girl's fuller, curvier figure. It was just as Coach Langford had suspected, but it was her word against Blackford's. But what the referee didn't know was that Lauren had proof. Lauren wrote a blog post detailing the scandal. Soon, the truth would be out. The new modesty rules that were put in place at the school were solely for policing young girls' bodies. She believes the whole incident was an orchestrated campaign against Brecken, her sister, and other girls of color. One terrible incident in particular was at the ugly heart of it all. As a swimmer coach at another school within the district that regularly competes with Diamond Hill, I watched these scandals divide my swimming community. Coach Langford wrote, This has caused my own athletes to needlessly self-conscious about the appearance of their bodies, which preoccupies them just as much, if not more, than the quality of their performance. What's clear is that these girls' bodies are being policed, not their uniforms. These young swimmers aren't being punished for wearing their suits in scandalous or provocative ways. Her post continues, but rather because their ample hips, full chests, and dark complexions look different than their willowy, thin, modestly pale teammates. Some will argue this scandal has nothing to do with race. The issue becomes glaring when officials are overheard acknowledging that the white athletes are bearing too much skin as well, yet they've never been disqualified. But that was an all. Coach Langford detailed another incident that had taken place within the year. Unbelievably, a parent had secretly taken photographs of Brecken's rear when she was wearing a swimsuit and had circulated them via email to other parents and teachers. Uniform violation, the parent wrote, and later someone overheard them saying that for the sake of their sons, the mothers of these young ladies should cover up their daughters. Coach Langford concluded her post. If you do not like the way swimsuits fit on these girls' bodies, then don't look. They are minors, children, and no one should be looking at them anyway. We cannot take back what has already unfolded, but we can make sure it does not happen again. It wasn't long before Coach Langford's post went viral. Although the issue with the referee was under investigation, it wasn't long before the Anchorage School District was forced to take a stance on the matter. Meanwhile, Brecken was going public with the shocking story. The incident had reached the ears of Kelly Clarkson, who invited both the swimmers and her coach to appear at the Kelly Clarkson show. Everyone who saw the episode was disgusted too, and some were quick to take to the comment section to point out the startling facts. The thing that really frustrating is the more curvy a woman is, the more pressure she is to be modest. I mean, come on, folks. Is this really about being modest or body shaming because men can't handle it? One woman wrote, What's worse is that the referee who made this call, disqualifying her, was a woman. Seriously, how can a woman do that to a girl? Stop body shaming females for being who they are. Another proclaimed, But would there be any justice? The association reversed the ruling and reinstated her points in title. Then, there were two very strict reminders sent out to all staff and referees. First, there could be zero assumptions about standard issue suits, which in many opinions would have been obvious. Second, and most importantly, it was professionally and personally inappropriate to judge a competitor based on their appearance. Again, this should have been obvious, but apparently a few individuals need a reminder. There was no place for sexism, racism, or discrimination in their competitions. However, there was one silver lining to the entire ordeal. The media coverage had brought her skills into the spotlight. She ended up receiving several college offers and talk of scholarships, not to mention people started knowing her name around the swimming circuit, this time in a good way. The insane incident was over and she could finally focus on her dreams again. She stands alone looking around at everyone enjoying their meals. Feeling content, she notices a waitress coming straight towards her. She welcomes her with a warm smile, but her smile is not reciprocated. Instead, what was waiting to meet her will impact the very depths of her psyche, crushing her confidence and pregnancy for days to come. Sharisha Rayleigh Gobin is a mother of four from Mariswell, Washington. With two boys and two girls, Sharisha and her husband had been excited for the arrival of two more family members as they were having twins. As enthusiastic and dedicated parents, they always dreamt of having a big family but never expected their plans to lead to this. Being a mom of four, Cherisha never has time for herself, and now with her twin pregnancy, she was more tired than ever. 
Although she loved being pregnant and being a mother to her beautiful children, she still found it exhausting at times. She couldn't remember the last time she did something for herself, but that was about a change. One day, she received a call from her mom and sister. They were trying to persuade Cherisha to take a break from mom life and go out with them for a girl's night. Immediately, Cherisha rejected their offer to take her out. She wasn't feeling well and wanted to rest, not go out. She was seven months pregnant after all, but her family persisted. They convinced her that resting and going out, away from the constant need of her kids, were the same things and exactly what she needed. Being a mom is work, and she was working 24 hours, 7 days a week. Jerisha realized that they were right, but what they didn't know is that something would go horribly wrong. It was a few hours before Cherisha and her mom and sister were to head out for a night of fun. Changing from one outfit to the next, Cherisha felt so uncomfortable. She had no idea what to wear as so many of her clothes didn't fit her right, but that was not all that was causing her discomfort. Like every other pregnant woman, her back was sore and her belly ached, but there was something else, a constant dull pain, and it was starting to make her worry. It had felt like this for two hours now. Should she be taking this more seriously? What if something was wrong? Anxious, she called her mom. Her mom asked her what it felt like and she explained. Laughing, her mom asked her when was the last time she had eaten. Trisha laughed along when she realized she's just really hungry. She had been saving herself from eating out. Her cravings for meat were so intense that it's all she wants so she decided to have a fill tonight. Or so she thought. Finally deciding on an outfit, Trisha and the girls headed towards Buzz Inn Steakhouse, a restaurant they have been to many times so they knew the menu would have all the meat Trisha could have ever asked for. Getting out of the car, Trisha felt good for the first time in what felt like years. Little did she know, she was so excited for a meal that she had disastrous consequences. Trisha walks through the restaurant doors with her mom and sister. As they walk to the hostess and ask for their seat, Trisha falls behind. She looks around the restaurant. This is the first time she's been at the restaurant without having to be on high alert with kids hanging off her side. She can finally relax, but something tells her not yet. As she looks at everyone enjoying their meal and drinks, her waitress walks towards her. With her mom and sister making their way to the seat, Cherisha thinks the waitress must think she's not with them. Cherisha welcomes her with a smile, ready to explain, but her smile wasn't reciprocated. Instead, the waitress looks up at her and down with disdain before she speaks. The waitress immediately asks her to leave. Confused, Cherisha asked her to repeat herself. The waitress explained that she was dressed inappropriately, breaking their no shoes, no shirts, no service policy. Cherisha asked if she was being serious. The waiter replied, Yep, you can't be here. Feeling upset and angry and embarrassed, Cherisha and her family left with revenge on their mind. Cherisha was wearing a white long flowy skirt with a black crop top that exposed her pregnant belly. She looked like every other crop top wearing trendy woman if it were not her pregnancy. Feeling humiliated and wrong done, Cherisha didn't sit idle. Taking the Facebook, she posted about the ordeal and uploaded her picture. The response was overwhelming. She captioned her photo, I was just denied service at the Buzz Inn on State Avenue in Mauricewald for my outfit. I'm violating the health code. Tons of support flooded in for Cherisha. The discussion around pregnancy and appropriate dressing soon went viral and sparked outrage. Buzz Inn Steakhouse released a statement apologizing for the ordeal, but Cherisha says, It's pretty ridiculous I was shamed the first place and had to drive across the town to eat. Our bodies aren't just toys. They're for a purpose and I think it's a beautiful purpose. Cherisha's message is important. Body shaming should be left in the past and we're sure Cherisha now eats at much more pregnancy-friendly restaurants.